Hello everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we share a demo review of the two notes Opus. First of all we will hear the unit in action with the demo song, then we will describe the technical characteristics of the unit, then we will hear more sounds in the dedicated section of this video, and finally I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell as it would be of a great help. Let's start! Let's now describe the unit. First of all, the Opus is an amp simulator, IR loader and amp DI box, which can be considered as an evolution of the previous Cabin Plus. It offers five preamp emulations with five more slots for future preamp models via firmware updates. There is not a clear reference to the real amp counterparts of each available model. Nevertheless, basically we have a clean preamp called Foundry, which should be a Fender Deluxe Reverb, a British inspired preamp called Foxy, which I guess is a simulation of a Vox, a kind of simulation of a Plexi, which should be the Albion, and a Mesa Boogie or Evo H for metal and high gain tones, which is the Nifty 50. Finally, there is a preamp dedicated to the bass guitar. Then we have four power amp simulations with the tube models that are a 6L6, EL34, EL84 and KT88. We can also choose whether to use a Pentod or triode push-pull class AB or single-ended class A power amps, which is a nice option. More on that in my two cents section of this video. Then we can load Dean IR for cabinet simulations with dual miking facilities and eight microphones per cabinet that can be chosen. The unit is already preloaded with 32 DIN IR cabinets, including captures from Steve Stevens, Dave Friedman, Pete Thorne, George Lynch, and Felix. We have more than 40 acoustic impulse responses too. We can also load our own IRs, actually up to two IRs at a time, which is nice as we can, for instance, have together an IR of an SM57 and a Royer 121, also with the possibility to align 
the phases of the two IRs, which is super important for me. The IR's length can be set to 20, 40, 100 and 200 milliseconds long. Opus internal memory has the following allowances in relation to the length of the IR's imported that you can read in the picture in the screen. Furthermore, the unit offers an EQ, an enhancer, a noise gate and 12 reverbs. I have to say that the EQ and the enhancer expand a lot the tone shaping capabilities of the Opus, allowing us to fine tweak our tone. We have 99 preset locations and USB integration with our computer in order to control the unit with the Torpedo Remote. The Torpedo Remote allows us to transfer IRs from our computer. The unit offers also Bluetooth capabilities so that we can control the Opus with a remote app that we can load in a tablet or a phone. The app is pretty nice looking and easy to use. Considering the dimension of this unit, I have to say that it is pretty rich in terms of I.O. and connection capabilities, with some options that are actually offered almost only by two notes devices. Let's describe the I.O. also sharing the two main major use cases you may want to use the Opus with. We have an input that can be used as a guitar input uh, or a line level input or as an input for an amp speaker output. Then we have an output to be used in order to connect the unit to a speaker or a load box. And please notice that the unit cannot be used as a load box. Therefore, if you connect the output of your amp to the input of the Opus, you need to connect the output of the Opus to a speaker or a load box, like a Boss Waza tube expander. So here the use case is that you may want to use a real tube amp connected to a load box or a real speaker that you can use for instance as a monitor. And at the same time, you want to be able to use your amp with the cabinet simulation of the Opus to feed a mixing desk or an audio interface in order to have a consistent sound live or to record your amp without the need to professionally mic your amp, which is pretty hard to do. On the other side of the unit, we have an aux in, an headphone out, and the balanced and unbalanced output. So basically, the second use case is to use the Opus as a full amp and cap simulator to build an ampless pedal board. Of course, you can also pair the Opus with the preamp like the Revolt. This is possible thanks to the power amp simulation offered by the Opus that can be used stand alone, I mean fully separated from the preamp simulation, which is something that only a few devices offer. We also have a MIDI input via mini jack and the conversion cable is included in the box that basically allows this unit to be easily integrated in a full ampless pedalboard setup. And this is a nice upgrade over the Cabin. The unit also offers USB connectivity to be able to control the unit with your computer and to load IRs. In terms of ADA conversion we have 24 bits and 96 kHz with 32 bits internal processing. As far as I know, so far, the unit cannot serve as an audio interface. The weight is 450 grams having a metal chassis, so it seems pretty sturdy. It runs at 12 volts and 200 milliamperes, and the price is around 320 bucks. Let's now hear some more sounds.
Final considerations here and please notice that I have purchased this unit with my own money and this video is not paid or sponsored. Let's talk about the pros and cons in my opinion. The first pro I would like to mention is that you can separate the preamp simulations from the power amp ones. This allows us to couple the opus for instance with a valve preamp like the Revolt removing the preamp sim from the opus and just leaving the power amp and the cab simulation active. Many other units allow us to switch on and off the complete amp simulation and not the preamp and the power amp separately. Therefore, when you pair an external preamp, basically you end up with a signal chain composed by the preamp and the cabinet simulation, which is pretty weird. The Opus, on the other hand, is flexible and allows us to do whatever we want. The second pro I would mention is the possibility to load a dual mic, which is pretty important for me, as I like to load a SIM of an SMC57 and a SIM of a Royer 1 to 1, and then mixing the two as I prefer to balance the amount of highs and lows. Furthermore, you can also load two IRs at a time, also allowing to align the phase of the two IRs. This is a great selling point for me, as I can basically load my IR of a Greenback mic'd with an SM57 and my IR of a Greenback mic'd with a Royer 1 to 1, aligning the phase of the two IRs in the case of need, which is great. I also appreciate the preamps collection available in the unit, which basically allows us to go from pristine clean sounds to heavy distorted ones. In the high gain territories, I would have appreciated more a simulation of a Soldano or of a Friedman, but you can still get, but you can still get pretty nice lead tones with the simulations that are available so far. I also appreciate that Two Notes is not mentioning the real amp counterparts. Of course, you can guess what they are, but I feel kind of Two Notes wants to be inspired by the real amps and not copy them exactly, leaving us with a lot of parameters to tweak in order to reach the tone we want. In fact, you can choose among four different tubes, you can set the contour of the power amp, etc. You have really a pretty high amount of parameters to set up in order to get the tone you want. I really prefer this philosophy over, for instance, the Fender Tone Master Pro. In fact, in the Tone Master Pro, uh, there are simulations of the Plexi or of the JCM 800 that finally do not sound like the real tube bank counterparts, and you have uh, a pretty low set of parameters to tweak. In the Opus, you have some basic preamp sounds inspired by the real amp counterparts, and then you can tweak a lot of parameters, basically getting your sound. I appreciate this approach. Also, the MIDI input is very useful, as it allows us to fully integrate the pedal in an ampless pedalboard setup. Also, the price is good, in my opinion. For instance, it is cheaper compared to the Universal Audio Ox, also providing MIDI integration and with the preamp simulations available. I mean, it offers much more than the Ox. Let's now talk about the cons. First of all, this is a mono device, meaning that also the reverb is mono. Furthermore, you don't have an effect loop, meaning that basically you cannot place a chorus or a delay after the amp and before the reverb. 
it, I mean the reverb included in the opus. In this way, basically, the reverb inside this unit is not usable for me. Basically, I typically run the reverb as the last effect in my signal chain, after a stereo chorus and a stereo delay. The second cons I would mention is that there is a pretty noticeable gap while switching preset, and there is not a scene management function, as far as I know. I would also mention that there is no impedance curve management, and this is a pretty important cons in a unit like this, which has a lot of features in terms of IR and cabinet simulations. I really hope that it will be added in future firmware upgrades. All in all, I like this little device. You can get really nice tones, in my opinion. You can tweak this device with a lot of parameters at your disposal, trying to reach your ideal tone. It is super flexible, as you can use it with your amp, or in an ampless setup with some features pretty hard to find in other devices, like the possibility to load two IRs and to align the phase or the possibility to split the power amp from the preamp. Of course, it is not perfect, but I enjoyed it, and coupled with something like the Revolt, it can really shine. We have now reached the end of this video. Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please subscribe to my channel, ring the notification bell, and leave a thumb up, as it will be of great help. If you're interested in my IRs or in my Tonics profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or the description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon in the next video, bye bye!